Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com with another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of July 11th, 2025. In today's episode, I thought we would really go for it by producing something with a human feel. And by that, I mean we're going to turn off the metronome. I'm going to pick up my guitar. I'm not going to pay attention to any kind of click track. I'm basically going to just hit the record button, play something off the top of my head. If I add some slow down parts or speed it up a little bit, I'm just going to get a basic idea down here. And then we're going to see what the tools in Cubase will allow us to do with something like that. Basically, let's just see how far we can go with it. So I'm going to grab my guitar. I want to at least make sure I'm somewhat in the ballpark as far as tuning. So I'm going to open up Cubase's test generator, set it to 440 hertz, turn this on. Let's make sure the A notes are correct. Close enough. Arm my track, set my cursor someplace, go down to the metronome. I'm going to turn it off, hit the record button. Just make sure I got a signal there. I'm going to hit a couple things. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to give myself some kind of a count in. One, two, three, four. All right, so there we definitely did not follow any kind of a tempo. I have no clue what that was. My project tempo says 128. So let's see what Cubase can do with some raw audio like that. So now if we take our piece of audio, turn the click back on and play it. You can hear that the click has nothing to do with the audio at this point. And definitely, if we went to any of the parts that slow down or speed up, this click would have no idea what's going on. So the first thing we want to do is try to make some kind of tempo detection and set up some kind of grid that matches this audio. And this will allow us to add things like drums and percussion and other synthesizers and know that we can have them match the beat of the audio. Cubase has a number of different tools dedicated to tempo detection and those kind of tasks. But probably the most comprehensive one, if we go up to Project, down to the option that says Tempo Track, and now in this sub-menu, we have this option that says Tempo Detection. Before we use this, we have to select the audio, which I've already done. But when I click on Tempo Detection, it opens up with the name of the audio file already in this name field, so we know we're going to analyze the right piece of audio. And there's a lot of options here, but initially all we have to do is hit the button that says Analyze, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Cubase analyzes this piece of audio, inserts a tempo track and a signature track, and then it shows all the little tempo variations. Hopefully most of these are correct. Obviously when it comes to the slowing down and speeding up parts, there may be some manual corrections to make. Let's test it and see how well it did. One, two, three, four. So after it got into the actual chord part, everything sounds pretty good. The initial click in sounds to me like we have all kinds of issues happening. So let's look at that and see if we can make some refinements. Once we've done our analysis, we're given some other options in this tempo detection panel under the area that says functions. 
There's one that says divide by two or multiply by four, three. The idea here, some ways we can change the way the click sounds. Right now when I play this with the metronome, click, click, click is a little bit more frantic than what I'm looking for. If I hit this option that says divide by two, Then I get a more relaxed click track, which is what I'm looking for in this song. Another thing that happens when it does this analysis is it writes in some kind of time signature. At the beginning, it puts a 1-4. So again, your click sounds like click, 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 just to repeat with no accents. Then the main thing that happens is that it turns on the warping tool. Warping tool allows you to grab things, the bar lines, and actually change where they fall. You go up to your toolbar and click on the warping tool. You can see that you have three different options. One says the warp grid, one says the warp grid where the musical events follow, and one says free warp. I'm gonna stay on this one that says warp grid because what this allows me to do is basically change where the bar lines are. I don't want anything in the audio to actually change. I want the audio to control everything else. So I need to make my grid move around the audio. Down on the tempo track that it created, it wrote in these little points on every beat that it detected. Where the main guitar starts here is a little point and it begins the bar and everything is working good from that point where it's not working so good are on these counting clicks that i put here right now when i look at these i can see that these points are not lined up with the actual clicks of the audio so by taking this warping tool and then dragging it around a little bit i can realign things so they match right with those clicks the first time through this, I just kind of rough it in. I don't worry too much about getting everything perfect or just relatively close. But the idea here is just get these to line up right with these clicks. If you need to draw an extra signature to make things line up, you can just use your pencil tool and draw that in. And now if I start from this point and play it. One, two, three, four. Now I have it. And then this proceeds pretty much this way for a good chunk of the song until we get to a point where I kind of slowed down on purpose. So then we have to address that. So let's play it where that slow down happens. We can hear that needs a bit of work. What I like to do is make sure the main points are hitting. And that would be where the tempo picks back up again right at this point. As long as it's hitting right on that chord and then picking up the tempo again, then I can kind of work backwards and fix the things that are wrong from there. There's an option up here that lets us increase the wave size. Sometimes that helps with seeing where the hits are. I can see on this one right here, right before everything picks up again, that this point is not lined up. But once again, if I turn on my warp tool, just take it and drag it to the right spot, Kind of proceed down the line, doing the same thing, and check out how close I am. That's pretty good right there. No reason to go any further. And again, it proceeds on to the end of the song, where there's another slowdown part. Let's hear this last part. Right there, we need some work. This point has to drag over. A few little changes there. If I get points that are kind of stubborn and I can't really figure out where the hit is happening, I switch over to my range tool, drag the range over that area, then switch back to my warp tool and click it till it falls where I want it. That'll do it. Check it one more time. And that's perfect for what I need right there. All right, next up, let's look at the chords. Cubase allows us to analyze chords right out of an audio clip. As long as we have a chord track in place like I do up here, all I have to do is grab this audio, drag it up to the chord track. It makes an analysis and immediately fills in all the chords for the song. Again, just like our audio, we may have some refinements to make. So let's investigate this. Because I played it, I know what the chords are. I'm going to look through this real quick. And from what I can see, everything looks perfect. Now, I did put the chords exactly where the audio is. When it comes to adding MIDI, that may or may not be a problem. Sometimes you want the MIDI to be an exact replica of the rhythm. But in my experience, more often than not, it's better to have these chords right on the beats instead of slightly ahead like they are here. 
It's an easy fix because you can quantize chord events just like you can anything else. If I go to the track, tell it to select all the events on this track, it highlights every chord. If I go up and set my quantize to say an eighth note and say quantize, all those chord events are now shifted a little bit and now they're exactly on the bars and beats of every measure. So then I went ahead and grabbed my acoustic guitar and added some double parts that way and we start to get a sound like this. Go ahead and record a bass part in here. One, two, three, four. When it comes back in after this middle slowdown, I really want it to build up, get some symphonic strings going on. Of course, we'll use Iconic a Sketch for that. So I'll start by taking a Hallion track, adding the chords, do the typical explode the chords function, take these tracks, move them onto my Hallion Sonic template that already has all the string parts laid out, add some modulation data to all of this, switch to my pencil tool and draw it in. If you don't have modulation data, sometimes you can't even hear these instruments initially. I'm gonna move these tracks into a group just makes them a little easier to control. Whew, sends shivers up my spine. Then I added a couple of touches just for dramatic effect where the slowdown part in the middle happens. I put an iconic a sketch timpani part in here. Then added a cymbal crash. just to fill in those transition places. And if you make a guide track like I did, you'll notice that I kept playing through that break part, and I did that intentionally so I could keep some idea of what the actual tempo was, even though I was slowing it down at this part here. It'd be very hard to figure out what's going on without some kind of guide track. But once you get your song going and you start filling in these elements, because we have a grid now, you can take things like this guide track, basically remove anything that was just there to fill space. So again, if I back that out, maybe put a little fade here. So then you're just left with something like this. It goes into silence. So now when I put all my other instruments in there, they can fill up this extra space. And then you get something like that going. So, so far we got some good instrumentation in here, but we haven't done anything with drums or percussion. So let's see what we can do with that. So for the drum part, I opened up a groove agent, loaded up the kit, which is kind of this acoustic kit, opened up one of the presets called Lightning. Then I just played a real basic kick and snare just to get some timing going. What you can very likely encounter at this point is that as you add some MIDI instruments, especially some kind of drum or percussion, you may notice a certain looseness in your acoustic performance. This is where your timing is gonna really start to show up in terms of how well you've got this grid locked on. A couple of important things you have to pay attention to. On all your MIDI tracks, you wanna make sure you go up into the inspector and there's an option here that toggles between musical mode and what's called linear mode. If you have any MIDI tracks that are on the linear mode, you're gonna see this little clock show up. You definitely want to hit that button and make sure that the little note shows up instead. This causes your MIDI parts to follow the tempo and the changes that you make on the grid with your audio warp. If you don't have this turned on, as you change tempo or audio warp things, these MIDI parts go all over the place and you won't know what's going on or why it's being affected the way it is. So make sure your MIDI parts are set to musical. The other thing you have to pay attention to as you go into this kind of editing that I'm going to show you now is when you go up to your warp tool, where before we just had the warp grid on, that was great when we were working just around the audio and we wanted to make sure that nothing was affected, only the bar lines. Now we're gonna change this to the option that says warp grid and the musical events follow. What happens with this option when we're using our warp tool, not only does the grid change, but anything that you have set to this musical mode is also going to move and change. The audio still will remain as it is, basically untouched, but any MIDI parts we have in here, they're going to move in time as we tighten up this performance. And what we do now, basically just go through it and listen to it. If something sounds loose or out of time, this is the chance to really tighten it up. This will really make the difference in terms of how effective things are with your audio. So as I'm playing this...
anything that seems out of time, the kick hits too early or the snare, you just grab it now with this warp tool. And not only will it change the grid, but it will also change the MIDI parts. This is a fantastic option in terms of really tightening up your performance, making everything really line up with your audio. I'm going to add some chords onto a synth pad just to have something in the background. And at this point, really, the sky is the limit. We could go on and on making an arrangement. You could add vocals, all kinds of other instruments. But we'll stay simple for today. But just these few instruments, it gets the point across. Let me show you a couple extra things that are kind of fun and pretty easy to do that you may want to try. On my Groove Agent track, which just has this real basic drum part, if I duplicate this and then remove all the parts from the duplicated track, you open up Groove Agent, you have these blue patterns, which are fills. It's fun to just kind of sprinkle these throughout the arrangement. I find that if you put them out every four bars or so, if I take this and drag it on here, and the pattern below that was simple, just shrink that so it's out of the way, and just do that for a couple of these other ones. Take another fill, and then shrink the pattern. You get these kind of things. It's kind of fun to just break up the patterns. Then you have these kind of pink ones for endings. You can experiment and see if those are any good. And you also have these green ones for introductions. Drag one of those up. But I don't want a long introduction like that. I'm going to shrink it down to just about a beat and a half. The last thing I'm going to do on this one for today, I'm going to grab my guitar one more time, basically just jam a lead line over the top, and we'll see what we come up with from that. So that should do it for now. So sit back, relax, and have a listen to our little composition. See what you think about how well we approach trying to keep a human feel here. And as you listen through this, think about ways you can take these ideas and various techniques and then apply them into your own music and productions. Have some fun with it. Go make some great music. And then I'll see you next time. One, two, three, four. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we took a shot at trying to create something with a human feel. We turned off the metronome, picked up a guitar, just played some chords, going for the feel of it, and just letting everything else follow from that. We examined the detect tempo options, some of the adjustment functions for changing the click afterwards. When we start to create a grid, we assigned a chord track, added some various other instruments, then brought in some drums and drum fills. And we will continue to explore all these different features and functions and the various creative tools that are available to us. As always, it's great to have you guys here, and I'll see you on the next video.